Researchers believe a rare mineral can give valuable information about climate change. Researchers at Binghamton University in New York found what's called nacolite. It's a mineral that's yellowish green or brown and forms only under environmental conditions marked by very high atmospheric CO2 levels. They say it can therefore be used as a marker and benchmark for studying CO2 levels in our atmosphere today and make predictions about tomorrow. What they found was warming of the Earth about 65 million years ago was concurrent with CO2 levels of at least 1,125 parts per million, three times current levels, and actually pretty near where it, we can expect them to head, uh, these researchers believe, over the next 100 years, under current projections of fossil fuel burning. Now, here by phone to help us sort out this finding is Tim Lowenstein. He's a geologist at Binghamton University, one of the researchers who helped make this determination. Uh, Tim, thanks for being with us. Hi, Susan. Glad to talk to you. Now, where did you find this nacolite? This nacolite comes from a very famous lake deposit in Colorado called the Green River Formation, and it comes from the Eocene epoch 50 to about 52 million years ago. So this, this, um, this mineral doesn't actually contain CO2. It only, it's just that it forms in the presence of high levels of CO2 in the atmosphere? Yeah, that's a good question. It contains carbon and oxygen, which is what CO2 is made from. So it forms in contact with the atmosphere and actually uses the carbon and the oxygen from the atmosphere. So when they say that CO2, and once it hits the atmosphere, it doesn't matter where it is. It could be in the Arctic, it could be in Florida, anywhere. Why would it form in, in, in only certain spots? Well, it forms in very salty lakes. Um, water has to be evaporated a great deal in order to make it form. And today, there's a mineral that forms from carbon and oxygen from the atmosphere called trona. Um, and it's pretty common today in salty lakes. But back in the Eocene 50 million years ago, the mineral that formed was nacolite instead of trona. And because um, nacolite formed in not trona, we, th uh, we found that it had to have formed under very high uh, carbon dioxide conditions much higher than today. So the, the presence of this nacolite is telling you that 65 million years ago there was this significant warming of the earth and these high levels of CO2. So how does that help you predict where we go from here? Well, it turns out that the nacolite formed actually about 50 million years ago, and it formed um, it CO2 of over 1,000 parts per million. And interestingly, that value isn't all that different from where we're headed in the next couple of centuries. So. What we saw in the early Eocene, very warm climates, is a parallel to what we may be seeing over the next few centuries. So you're comparing what, what, we, what you're observing from this mineral 65 million years ago to where you think we're going to be in 100 years, which is well, a blip. Yep, and, and, and the important finding that I think we made is that during this very warm period in the past, um, we have now found that it was linked to very high carbon dioxide. So there's definitely a very close tie between CO2 in the atmosphere and global warming. Well, certainly that CO2 was not linked with uh, the burning of fossil fuels. So no. does, it, does it reason that, that um, it, it's an indicator that CO2 levels rise and fall over millions of years? Oh, they certainly do. And over in natural conditions, without burning of fossil fuels, the CO2 rises and falls um, up because of things like more and, few, more and fewer volcanoes and volcanic activity or weathering at the Earth's surface. These are processes that are pretty slow, but they control the CO2 in the atmosphere and can cause it to go much higher than it is today or much lower. So it may not be so unnatural as it may just be um, not very good for the human race. <laughs> well, what we're doing now is we're ri causing CO2 to rise at unprecedented rates. The amount of CO2 we're putting into the atmosphere is happening faster than it happened back in the Eocene. So even though we had very high CO2 during the Eocene, it wasn't, didn't get high over centuries like it is now. So does this mean that you, you are now observing new formations of nacolite forming? Well, we, it's not forming now. The CO2 in the atmosphere would have to get to be about three times what it is today, and then it might form again. So in the next century or two, it's possible that it will form. Now, do you say that, that this, is our, this is our destiny here, even if, even if all the action that everyone's talking about is taken? Um, good point there. You know, the, the IPCC, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, came out with the latest findings predicting CO2 in the atmosphere. 
over by the year 2100, and their estimates were between 700 and 1,000 parts per million. So there's a lot of wiggle room depending on how we burn fossil fuels. Hmm. Um, tell us about uh, your big concern going forward is um, unexpected, unpredictable changes, but ones that you say are, are certain to happen. We just don't know what they are yet, uh, changes in ocean circulation or uh, melting ice caps. Well, we're all worried about that. It's not the slow, gradual changes that we're observing even today, but there may be some tipping points where something might happen very dramatically that we can't even predict. And I think many of us scientists are worried about those kinds of unexpected and unpredictable changes. What about adaptation? Do you believe that the human race and other species will be able to adapt to this warming? Oh, sure. I mean, the human race is great at adapting, especially if you have the money to make the changes. So, you know, the richer countries will adapt better than the poor countries, and we generally will adapt better than animals and plants who will not be able to, some of whom will not be able to make these changes. Right, which also may not be, you know, a, a, an unnatural situation anyway. I mean, who, who believes that humans are long for this planet anyway? Right. All right, well, Tim Lowenstein, fascinating research you're doing there at Binghamton. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you for having me. All right, we appreciate it. Bye-bye.